Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. We're back with Day 9, November 9, 2019, Fall Gratitude and Thanksgiving Bible Journaling Camp. Say that fast five times. Okay, again, Fall Gratitude and Thanksgiving Bible Journaling Camp. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Let's pray, let's get started, and here we go. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for today. I pray that you will bless each and every camper here today. I thank you so much for their commitment to you, their, your, their commitment to your word, and their commitment to this class. I pray that you bless them, and I pray that this camp will encourage all who come. It is yours, Lord. We give it to you. We lay it at your feet. We pray that it not only blesses those who come to this camp, but also that it blesses you. We do all as if unto you, Lord. And in this camp, God, I pray that each day as I come and bring a different project for us to work on, Lord, that it would be to your glory. Lord, please be with each and every camper. Help them to keep their eyes on you, keep focused on you and what you're doing in their life. And I pray that you would bless them and their and their faithfulness in, in sticking to the road and getting this done. And even if they fall a little bit behind, that's okay. We can catch up via the, the YouTube videos. What a blessing. Okay, Lord, um, thank you so much. I'm excited for us to work the day, and thank you for everything you've given us. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. <clears throat> pardon, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, guys. Okay, so I hope you guys are feeling that thankfulness and that gratitude that this camp is all about. We are, we are already on day nine. Ah, oh, can you believe it? So just as a quick reminder, remember, we just finished day eight. We did a little bit of gessoing so we could use the archival inks in the background. Also, if you're going to use any kind of paint, we're going to start mixing with our paints a little bit if you'd like to. If you don't have gesso, you can buy clear gesso. Um, they have it at Michael's, Amazon, all that kind of good stuff. Or um, you can um, even look at Tuesday morning. Sometimes they have it. Um, or you can just get plain old white acrylic paint. Just make sure that it is fully dry before you turn the pages. And um, and this is supposed to be a quick dry and easy cleanup. So and it is. This is only fifty cents at Walmart. So if don't spend if you cannot afford it. I used a coupon. Um, I waited for a sale and used a coupon. Um, if you are going to use the white gesso, it works perfectly fine too. Always do. I always do in my work, in my Bible, in my journals. I lay down two thin layers, sometimes a third layer, if it is a very heavily pigmented ink or paint. Um, so I would suggest with the white acrylic, just make sure you have very, very good coverage. Don't soak your page. It's better to do two light coats than one thick coat. Just an encouragement. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. We're not going to be using that today. We will use that in tomorrow's class. So remember, we're doing it November 8th was yesterday. We did, we used it yesterday. Today we're not. Tomorrow the 10th we will, not the 11th, but on the 12th we will. So 8th, 10th, and 12th. We'll have just sewed pages prepped. Now remember, you're going to have to do it as we go because I'm adding in extra pages. And I have not said that to you guys, and I'm sorry. Um, and even if you just them, we're not going to use it, it's still fine. It just makes your paper that much sturdier. So hang with me. I promise, I promise. Um, even if you just sew a page, again, it, it, it can still be good. It can still be used. Okay, let's get into today's lesson. It's so much fun. Okay, I am going to cover very quickly. Hold on. And I did not have this out, silly me, because... I was um, going through my materials and I had misplaced some things. So I was kind of, uh, you know how when you lose something you're panicking and you're digging through everything and you're, you're not tossing it everywhere but you're not keeping it as neat as you would like to? <clears throat> that was my day this morning. So, alright, so we are going to talk about very quickly, this is a sheet from the Holy, or an encouragement from Sarah at theholymess.com. I'm going to ask you today to please give a quick note to Sarah and say thank you for all of this. She is so kind and generous to share this. I, I discovered this in my kit from a Bible journaling conference I went to online. Amazing, wonderful teachers, loved it all. 
So please, um, I, I reached out to her and I said, hey, we're going to have a fall, you know, gratitude and Thanksgiving Bible journaling camp. Could I share this document if I print it out and give it? And she was so gracious, she said, of course. So please take a few minutes. If you feel led, I'm hoping you do. Give her that. Thank you. We are so grateful that you shared all of your good stuff. There's more to come. There's more to come. You may want to wait till the end, but in the meantime, at least put her on your prayer list to thank her. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Sorry, that has to ring. We have to see if baby's coming. So hold on. My screen goes black. No, nope, it's scam blankly. Okay, praise the Lord. We get to stay with you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's quickly go over this. Ten ways to fix a Bible journaling mistake. Oh, that never happens to me. Go look at yesterday's lesson if you haven't seen it yet. Never happens to me. There's always a way to fix a mistake. That's the part that's the joy and the journey. As a creative person, we get to figure out how to solve that solution. So here's some great tips. Put a piece of washi, and washi tape over it. Amen. Washi is a crafter's best friend, a paper crafter's best friend. Put a sticker over it. You know that saying in the, in the whole journaling, scrapbooking world. Put a sticker over it. Cross it off and keep going. Yeah, sometimes that happens. We just have to put that neat in. And let me suggest, hold on one second. My pins are over here. Um, might I suggest, and this is going to be great. You're going to, to see how these pins work. So there's the word oops. Oh, sorry, I've got tape and stuff on me. Just do one line. Don't scribble. That doesn't look good. The one line looks good. Okay, and you're like, well, Chris... You just did that to your page. You messed your page up. No. Give it a few minutes. I'll show you. You guys already know the secret. But anyways. Glue a piece of paper over it. There you go. Put down a whole new piece of paper and start over. I've said that many times. Go for it, guys. It's okay. Make it part of the design. Well, you know, maybe that is creative. Maybe somebody would like to see that. Paint or stamp over it. Okay. Print off a margin strip and stick it down over the whole margin with washi tape. So you don't have to cover the whole page, maybe just a strip of it. Paint over a mistake and, and then that washi hides the line of the two different pages. It helps kind of cover that up. Paint over a mistake with white paint, like we said, like a gesso or acrylic. Paint over marker bleed through with white paint. So, many of you have seen the ghosting or, you know, or where it bleeds through to the next page. We put ink here, we pick it up, and it shows through. Um, it happened in my journal. I'm not going to pull everything down because I have it all set up. But on that cover page, on the back page, I went through and stenciled with archival ink, and it bled through. And actually, it looks pretty good, but if you don't want it to be there, you can just cover it up with white paint or white gesso. And you can iron wrinkled pages. How good of an encouragement was that? Now, if you have not seen the friction pins, if you are like me and you're prone to an error here and there or a faux pas, um, <laughs> when I'm working in my Bible, I really thank the Lord for these pins because I don't necessarily feel you know, nervous about messing up a journal. I am more concerned about my Bible. And... And I know that's just personal thing. And, and I could literally bring out Bibles that I've had for years and years and years, 20, 30 years. And they've got boo-boos all in them. But I guess when you're creating something in a Bible, you want it to be a gift to God. So, you, you know, you kind of want to give them your best. So I highly recommend the friction pens. So there's my extra. Okay, let's move on to today's lesson. So thank you, Sarah. More exciting information from Sarah. Okay, so we are on day nine. I had to double check. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't recognized, we are at the middle of the book and you're going, oh, Chris, what are you thinking? We're not going to have enough pages. We're only on day nine. Hang with me. Hang with me. You've seen how I've been adding things in, right? So I would like everybody to pick one of these beautiful printouts from Alley Scraps. I have trimmed the bottom and the top off. You know, they come trimmed, and I've trimmed that off, but I've left the sides. Um, it's just me. So we're going to create an extra page. And you've been doing this all along. We've been creating extra days page. So that's why I was saying, 
wait on your gessoing because this is going to be tomorrow's page, okay? This is going to be the 10th. Today is the 9th, okay? Also grab out, if you have any of your scraps of, of your, of your um, cardstock or your designer paper, one of your embellishments, your sticky notes, I know we're going to use them, your one of these, uh, this page with the, the many different blocks in it, okay? And then you're also going to need this scripture page that begins with, and I should have numbered these. I'm so sorry I didn't do that. Believe me, I'm kicking myself. Nehemiah 1246. We are um, not going to um, use that verse. We are going to use this verse, Leviticus 22:29. When you sacrifice an offering of thanksgiving to God, you shall sacrifice it so that you may be accepted. So, all right, let's get going. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm just going to start from the foundation and we're just going to build it up. So I've already trimmed the top and the bottom so that it will fit on my page. And I also find it easier sometimes if I fold it back. This little journal is not so big that we can't do that. And it really helps me line things up. All right. And remember I said I was going to go back and trim that from that page before? I can't trim it because um, my scripture goes, it butts right up to the edge. So that's okay. Every now and then we get goodies that stick out in our journals, right? <laughs> it's the extra cushy blessings that come out of our journals. So, all right. So today we are going to work on this and add an extra page into our journal so that we may reach Thanksgiving Day. So, um, I love having days like this when I craft. I love having to be, you know, you know, thoughtful, creative on how we're going to get to the end. Um, if you didn't know this about me, I used to teach special ed and I loved special ed and I will tell you why. My students were mainstream children and I have worked with severe and severely and profound students as well, but the ones I'm referring to right now were mainstream students that just had a different way of learning. And what I would tell them is, you take the scenic route. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody is different. It's okay. So when we get into our journals and we go, oh no, I boo-booed, I don't have enough pages, we just add it in. You could literally just washi a piece of paper in if you wanted to. You can add whatever you want. It's your journal. But today, we're building our own. So, okay, so let's, next, I thought we could, I was going to pick green for mine. So I'm going to cut out my green little block here. And again, the orange paper, the, these boxes are all from Ally Scraps on Etsy. She graciously donated to our um, camp. And um, we are very thankful for her, as well as what was donated from Sarah before. We've had some amazing contributions. I cannot just say enough about that. So, um, we are so blessed, right? <laughs> okay, so now, literally, find what works best for you out of your scraps. So, right there is where I'm going to do it. Now, I'm going to tape this down. I always encourage you tape first, then cut if you can. Um, and cut wide. So for any reason something boo-boos, the cat runs in and bumps you, your child comes and hugs you and you you know you you don't get it the way you'd want it, you can still I think I'm out of tape. You can still work with it, okay? Alright, well this is gonna be fun to finish this without tape, but who'd have known, huh? <laughs> that was my backup tape. All right, I guess it's time to get out to the craft cottage and find more tape, but we will. No problem. I had the problem here, guys, and you know this, I've had to pack so much, pack so much ahead. Now, I don't know if you notice that is cut, but I'm not worried about it. It's okay, because guess what? Only you and me know. <laughs> so that's good, right? We're good. We're good. All right, so now I'm going to cut my scripture out, and I'm just going to give it a quick cut it off first, save my page, and always put everything back. Don't be like me and you're still fishing for all the stuff you were looking for. Oh my goodness, that happened to me earlier and it was just like, oh my goodness, where's my scripture? <laughs> oh, so, all right, so I'm just going to cut this out. 
and you can cut it out with cloud, you know, make it like with little clouds around it. You could tear, I could have torn this. I really like tearing the edges, um, but I didn't today. I'm just, I'm just going to trim it. I guess maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tear. How's that? So I really like, you know, just at this point, focusing on the lesson of this scripture. We have been given so many gifts, guys. We really, really have. And to be able to use this scripture, it fits perfectly, um, is such a blessing. So I'm going to put my scripture down there like that. And then I am going to also add a little flourish. And I'm going to put it over here. And you know what? This is going to be interesting because I do not have any more tape runner. Hold on, guys. Huh. Maybe I should take a break and go get some. Let's see here. I've got, you know what? I am just going to use, hold on. I'm just going to use Mod Podge. Yep. What should I use? I'll use my Mod Podge. All right. So, just so you know, this has never been opened. Can you believe it? You're with me. Woohoo. <laughs> I dried out so quickly. Do you know how to keep your glue from drying out? Um, you can leave it half covered, like, just like that, or you can take it all off, and when you close this up, put a piece of uh, um, wax paper in there, and it will keep it, it will seal it better. So you know that's what I'll be doing later. Um, let me grab one of my little makeup wedges, my makeup sponge. So here's the part about crafting that's great. We can do it on the fly. So I have my little inexpensive Walmart makeup sponge. And I'm just going to start attaching. Okay? And I'm just going to put it down. Um, the one thing I have to say, just like what I would tell my special, and I would tell you don't do it on your paper. My students, when I taught school was, we took the scenic route today. And that's okay. You know, I'm just going to use this, and I'm going to put it down, and it's all going to be good. You know, we could be sad and upset, and it wasn't exactly how we planned it. Or we could find joy in the journey. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn that on the edge today. And I think, because I have so much room in here, even though it fits, I think I'm going to go this way. I know. Okay, before I put anything down, wipe up that that I had left over. Um, yeah, this just reminds me of when I do all my junk journals. Um... If you guys don't know that, I love to make junk journals, and I will bring some of those back to the... I started one, and I never really finished it with you guys, because I ended up... We had something go on, but um, I promise you, um, I'll try to get a winter one done with y'all, and a spring one done with y'all. So, alright. Now, I'm going to stick in this, because it has a little bit more back to it. I'm going to really coat this baby down. Um... If you don't know, Mod Podge is kind of a watered-down glue, so it'll take a little bit for it to, you know, stick. I love, when I'm working with fabric, I love Fabri-Tac. I really love Tom Blumano when I'm working with paper, but that is all packed. So we are going to bloom where we are planted, and we're going to use what we have, and it's all good. Okay, that part's done. It is completely done. Just one second here. Okay. My, my notes went down, so I'm sorry, guys. Alrighty. So, today, I wanted our theme of what we give thanks for to be about um, our transportation. So, my son called this week, and he said, Mom, my car, it's died. It died turning a quarter going into our subdivision. And I was like, are y'all okay? And he said, yeah, yeah, we're okay, but it's so dangerous. And he's right. He's right. And, you know, sometimes we have cars that work. So while I'm talking, I'm going to be putting my stickers down, my little sticky notes. Um, we forget to thank God for the everyday basic necessities. Now, many of us who've had chronic car trouble, yeah, this isn't a neat, this isn't a, 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 it's not hard to be thankful for that. Um, for years, I drove very old, like 20-plus-year-old cars. And I didn't mind it because we were a single-income family. Um, we wanted big vehicles for our children. And, you know, because we were hauling kids everywhere. And 
I honestly, I wanted them to be safe. So, um, yes, I'm going to put this on the crease. And I know you're probably going, oh, but you don't have to put yours on the crease. You can do whatever you want on yours, okay? I want to give you that freedom. But for those of us who, who like to swim upstream, <laughs> we're going to swim upstream on the crease. All right. So, um, but my son called and he said, you know, well, Mom, they've quoted me a huge amount of money. And I said, well, sweetie, when you buy used vehicles, we're going to have, I have one left. I'm not sure. I think everybody I gave about the same amount. Um, so save that last one for another project coming and put it back in your little um, pouch so you won't lose it. Um, I told them, I said, you know, sometimes these things happen because, you know, God needs us to rely on Him. We need to be focused on Him. So many of you may travel by car, by bike. I know people who bike to work or to school. Um, many of you travel with other people. You carpool with people. Many of you travel by train or by subway. Many of you travel in um, your own way. I mean, I'll never forget when I was young, we went on a, a choir trip throughout the United States. I was in, I think it was in junior high. And I remember the first thing everybody asked us when we got to another state, when we sang at churches, the first thing they'd ask us was, do you have a horse? And I would be like, N no. And they'd say, well, then how do you get to school? <laughs> I would laugh and I'm sorry. It was a very genuine re question. You know, it was, it was really, that's what the question was. And I would say, my mom drives me or my dad drives me or I walk to school or I ride to school. So, and even if we walk to work, um, we need to be thankful for our feet. For somebody who has bad knees or our knees, we need to thank God because that's our form of transportation. So, today is all about how do we get from point A to point B. Okay, and I'm picking two colors. I'm going to go with green and orange today. Now, in a few more days, I'm going to start adding in my my lettering. You know, I, I have various of these. Um, I would encourage you, if you have a Tuesday morning near you, go pick up some letters. They have them at Walmart for like 97 cents, Dollar Tree a dollar. I don't, some of the Dollar Tree stickers, they're by the same company. They're just a different color. Some colors worked well, some did not. So, but I'm going to start getting some of these and using these in here in my journaling boxes. So, um, you do not have to have this. You can use a pen. You can use a marker. You can use whatever you like. You can cut out letters from a magazine. But I just want to give you guys a heads up. I'm going to start using my lettering soon. But, um, and it's just because it's fun. And I won't use it every day. I'll just use it every now and then. But, so today I want us to focus on transportation. And the real reason I'm doing this is when it gets cold, my hands get very sore. And I don't think my <laughs> my hands are that great. So my handwriting is that great. So I just <clears throat> I just want to be honest with you. I know the truth. You don't have to say anything. <laughs> so all right. So think about the things that have been that you have been blessed with. Um, oh, and some of you may ride a bus to work or to school or to church or whatever, how, whatever your form of transportation is. Um, I remember the days that I rode in carpool and of all the carpool parents, my sweet daddy was always late. He was always late. And, you know, teachers don't necessarily look well upon that. Um, but when you're in a carpool, you're kind of at the mercy of the parents who are driving you. So, um, and in that period of time, you know, people just didn't really say a whole lot, especially to the husband that was driving. So, you know, but I remember everything was affected. The, the friends, you know, our relationships were affected and, you know, I didn't like that. I mean, I have to be honest. I didn't like when people are upset with my dad because I loved my daddy and I didn't want anybody to be angry. So, you know, sometimes we pray for the person that they're able to get us there on time. You know, my husband used to drive carpool to the people who worked in Austin. And, you know, it, it was a big finagling because they didn't all work at the same company. They worked in various places throughout Austin. So, you know, it, timing was everything, and Austin traffic was 
horrible. And um, for the longest time, there was a season where it was just him and it was all the women. And, um, you know, he was just like, man, I feel uncomfortable. You know, he did fine. He just was quiet. And my husband is not quiet. So that was a big deal. But it, it all was fine. And we ended up, he was really good friends with some. And, and one of the lady, unfortunately, was going through cancer and has, has, has since passed. And uh, we were called and we went to her funeral. So it was a blessing. You know, I even got to meet all the people. So, you know, you don't know how transportation affects your everyday life until you don't have it. So let's thank God for the ability to go to and fro, wherever we're going. All right. Now, let's go back to this scripture for today. It is wonderful. When you sacrifice an, offer, an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord. So think about that. Let's stop. When you sacrifice an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord. If you have a colored pen, can I ask you to underline the word sacrifice? What you offer God as a gift of thanksgiving, is it difficult? Is it something that maybe pinches a little? And I'm not even talking about a monetary sacrifice. Yes, I hear that all the time. Um, I hear people say they're not going to give money to the Lord. Um, and I have to tell you, God calls us to give of our first fruits. So the way we have our set up, it's automatically taken out. We don't even think about it. And then we have other opportunities that if the Lord brings it, we add to that. Um, I purposely set everything up that way. Um, I do the day-to-day -day type, you know, things in our home, the financials. And my husband handles the big things. So sometimes it's a big sacrifice. I mean, when we had, you know vacations and we came back or when we had emergencies with my parents I gotta tell you money was tight because it cost extra money if you have to go sit with someone in the hospital it costs you money you gotta go eat out of a vending machine you've gotta go or somebody brings you a burger you got or I don't you know a veggie burger if it's me you gotta give them some cash that you normally would never spend um, the gas, the, you know, I didn't get here with the toothbrush. I got to go downstairs and buy one in the gift, you know, the hospital gift shop. And that not even a 99 cent quality toothbrush cost me $5. But thank you, Lord. You know, I can now brush my teeth. You know, things like that, that we may not carry in our purse. And eventually, yes, I had an emergency bag packed at all times to go for my parents. You know, deodorant, toothbrush, hairbrush, you know, a little bit of powder, you know, for my, um, makeup and some, you know, whatever, a little bit of perfume, you know, because you can stretch out in a hospital not being in a shower every day, but you do have to brush your hair and you can't not brush your teeth, I got to tell you. So anyway, so what is your sacrifice? You know, for me, sometimes my thanksgiving to God is helping somebody else out. It took time out of my day that I didn't necessarily have, or somebody needed a friend and they needed to walk and talk. And as many of you know, walking is painful for me. And um, you know what? And I, on those moments, I pray and I ask God, help me put my cane down so they don't worry about me. Those sometimes are sacrifices. Sometimes they're a joy beyond all words that you get to be there and encourage somebody. But how are you sacrificing an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord? When you clean your house so that your family will enjoy it, are, is that a sacrifice? Well, for me it is because this house is crazy right now. But it's a joy. It should be a joy. I mean, I feel like I'm excavating. I'm pulling layers upon layers out of my house. And I'm finding things from, you know, five years ago that just got stacked on. Because when things started coming in from my parents' home, I felt so guilty getting things out. I literally have two bags of Christmas I have not opened for the last two years. They're in the other room. I opened the presents and I put them in the bags or the box because I just felt guilty. And I know people don't understand that. But when I go in there and I sacrifice the time to clean up, guess what I'm going to get to find? Things I totally forgot that I've gotten. So sometimes our sacrifices are blessings is what I'm trying to say. Even though it may put you out you never know how you may be blessed. Okay, friends, we're getting ready to run out of time. I'm going to end this, and I'll have a part two. So hang in there with me, and come on back. Okay, bye, guys.